Fahrenheit 451, the novel, a discussion with author Ray Bradbury. Written, directed, and produced by Laurent Bouzereau. Edited by David Palmer. Director of photography, Michael Osmond. Sound, Brett Brook. Music by Bernard Herman. Universal Studios Home Video Production Manager, Marianne Mancy. Universal Studios Home Video Executive in Charge of Production, Colleen A. Ben. A lot of people ask me about the genesis of Fahrenheit 451. What was I up to? Where did I live? What was I doing? Well, I lived in Venice, California with my wife in a little $30 a month apartment. We had no money, and my wife got pregnant, and I went to New York and managed to find enough money to finance us for a while. But in the meantime, I was writing short stories. I wrote a story called The Pedestrian because I had an encounter with a policeman one night who asked me what I was doing. I was walking with a friend. And I said to the policeman, I'm putting one foot after the other, which was the wrong answer, you know. Very suspicious being a pedestrian walking. And because I looked at the sidewalks this way and that, and there's nobody except me and my friend. So the policeman reprimanded me, and I promised never to walk again. And I went home in a rage, and I wrote this short story called The Pedestrian. And it was published finally. And then I took the pedestrian out for a walk one night in another story, and he turned the corner, and he bumps into a little girl named Clarice McClellan. And she sniffs the air, and she says to him, I know who you are. You're the fireman. You're the man that burns books. And nine days later, Fahrenheit 451 was done. The original version of Fahrenheit was published in Galaxy magazine, a science fiction magazine. And then a young editor came along a few years later who had no money and he needed material and said, can you sell me something for $400? And I said, yes, I have a novel, Fahrenheit 451, and he bought it for $400. And that was Hugh Hefner. And it appeared in the second, third, and fourth issues of Playboy. So all the young men and all the old men of America owe me a debt of gratitude for helping start that magazine. I grew up in Waukegan, Illinois, and I'd walk down the beach with my father, and on the way we'd stop at the fire station. And my dad knew all the firemen, and some of them were relatives of mine, and I'd go in and pet the Dalmatian. huh? And so I had an intimate knowledge of firemen, and one of my uncles was a fireman who was killed falling off a fire truck when I was a kid. And it just struck me in thinking about firemen that what are we going to do with them in the future? A time will come when all the houses are fireproofed. So you've got a lot of firemen with no jobs. What are you going to do? I said, well, let's reverse it. Have them start fires instead of put them out. And then I had no title for the book. The original title was The Fireman. And I got curious as to what the temperature was that book paper would burn out. And I called UCLA, the chemistry department. They couldn't help me. I called SC, some of the other physics departments, and they couldn't help me. I said, dummy, call the fire department. So I called downtown, got the fire chief on the phone. I said, this sounds stupid, but tell me what temperature does book paper catch fire at? He said, just a moment, and he came back. He said, it catches fire at 451 degrees Fahrenheit. And I reversed it. I said, Fahrenheit 451, yes. So I don't know if that's true. I've never researched it since, but it it has a wonderful sound to it, doesn't it? And that's how it came to birth. And I wrote the short novel in the basement of the UCLA library because I had no office. There was a typewriter there you could rent for 10 cents a half hour. So I took a bag of dimes down there and I rented the typewriter for nine days and spent $9.80 and wrote a dime novel. And uh, it was published in the science fiction magazine and later I extended it to 50,000 words and it became the novel that you know now. The book was a long time coming to birth. Uh, You could say it went back to my great-great-great-grandmother, Mary Bradbury, who was tried as a witch in Salem in 1580. It was. She escaped, but she's in all the books about witches and witch burning. 
And then over the years, I read about the various libraries of Alexandria burning three or 4,000 years ago, I think twice by accident, once on purpose. And then in China, I heard rumors of burnings of libraries and books, and Hitler, of course, in Germany in the early 30s. And since I'm a library person, I've never made it to college, you see. I'm self-educated in the library. So anything that touches the library touches me. Huh? And I was vitally concerned and upset to see what was going on in the world. And then there were rumors of this kind of thing during the McCarthy period, the Joseph McCarthy period. Nothing really substantial. He never really got going, but he hurt a lot of people along the way and threatened books. I heard rumors also of book burnings and censorship in Russia, and it all came true later. We found out they burned millions of books and millions of authors. Fahrenheit 451 is the only science fiction novel I've written. People call me a science fiction writer. I'm not. Uh, Martian Chronicles is a Greek myth, a, an Egyptian myth. It's fairy tales, it's fantasy. There's no science fiction in there at all. But Fahrenheit is firmly based in technology and what we were doing to ourselves with television. I could foresee the day would come when you'd have wall-to-wall -wall television, and we have it right now, if you want to install it, you know? And I had the seashell radio, and years later, some Japanese film people came to my office, and they had the first Walkman radio, and they put it on my ears, and they said, Fahrenheit 451, Fahrenheit 451. So in a way, I invented the damn Walkman, huh? Which, uh, I, it's, it's a big step over the ghetto blaster. When you finish writing a story, years later you find out why you picked the names. It just popped into your head. Now Montag, I didn't really know what it meant, but it had a nice sound. The real reason I picked Montag is the name of a paper company. It puts out all kinds of stationery, and my subconscious gave him that name. Faber, who appears later in the novel, is a philosopher. He's a maker of pencil. <laughs> and I didn't realize this until years later, after the book came out. Uh, you just go with these things and hope that they make sense later, and generally they do. The salamander, which is prominent in the novel and the film, goes back to Francis I of France. His symbol was the salamander. In other words, this lizard, which lives on the hearth and comes out of the fire, huh? And uh, again, I didn't realize this was all subconscious, and I verified it later when I went to France visited Francis the first castle and saw the salamander on the hearth. But it was the novel first, and I'd put it in the back of my head. The threat of atomic war was very fresh in my mind when I wrote the novel because it was just four or five years after Hiroshima, and we all were living in anticipation of being hurt or destroyed by this new device, and the hydrogen bomb was in the process of being invented. It was a threat to all of us, and I wrote the book under the cloud of this concept. But in making the film, I advised Truffaut, and I would advise any others, eliminate the atomic bomb thing. You don't need it. Uh, it's an extra threat, but the real threat is ignorance and the lack of education. Well, I have a literary representative named Don Congdon, and when I was married, 53 years ago, the same month, Don Congdon, who was an editor for a publishing firm, called me and said, I'm becoming a literary agent. Do you need one? I said, only if I can have one for a lifetime. And he said, that's me. I said, okay. So he's been my agent for 53 years. Uh, I married him the same month I married my wife. It's been I've been very lucky to have these bookends on my life. That's why the book Fahrenheit is dedicated to Don Congdon. The history of Fahrenheit is the history of all my books. I'm creeping up on the public very slowly. <laughs> the initial edition of Fahrenheit was five thousand copies the, the first year. That's all. 
And then every year after that, it sold 2,000 copies, hardcover. And then the paperback edition, 10 or 15,000 copies. And every year since then, maybe 20, 30,000 copies. So you accumulate hundreds of thousands of copies over 40 years, but that's not a bestseller. It's an accumulated bestseller. To speak of Fahrenheit, you have to speak of all my other books. Everything has been an accident. Everything has been unplanned. Everything has been a passion, a madness, a great love. I've had fun all of my life. I've never worked a day in my life. I've done all these things. Now I go on to the next thing. And each of my books is a special love. I have no one that's above the others. And everything that's happened to me about Fahrenheit since is a reward from playing the game for the fun of it to see what in hell was in the back of my mind. And it, they, all these things are a reward for me now. And it's wonderful. But thank God I behaved unconsciously and didn't try to intellectualize my career left or right, black or white, up or down, male or female, none of that junk. Huh? Just me and the typewriter and the future. Thank you.